Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service today. Especially welcome to you who are joining us by way of Facebook. Thank you for joining us today here at the First Church of God. We've gathered this morning to worship the Lord and to lift Him up. Many people are still gathering here from our uh, 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 lobby area. And uh, we just want to uh, welcome you and thank you for being here. Before Stuart leads us in our time of worship, if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads and letting me lift up our needs before the Lord. Jesus, we are here together to worship you. For you are worthy of our praise and of our worship. So whether we are here in this building or whether we're home watching on Facebook, we want to give you the praise and the honor and all the glory. So we pray for the Spirit now to come, equip us and help us, energize us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you stand and worship with us this morning?
We pray for our nation as we are in the midst of this pandemic. We pray for some answers, for some remedy for this. We pray for our election that is coming up just a week from this Tuesday. That your people will vote. We pray, we thank you for the, the freedom and the privilege and the, the right to vote. We thank you so much for that. We pray for the outcome of the election, both here, statewide, and nationally. We pray for the church, this congregation, but also our other brothers and sisters around the city and around the nation and even around the world today. As people have met in the various places, the various time zones, the various circumstances, all for the expression of lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. We join them together today. We give you now the rest of our time, our time of ministry, our time of the word, our time of prayer, our time of worship. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As Brother Charles and Deb come to minister to us, before they do, let me say thank you. For those of you that are giving to this local church, some of you are giving online, and we so thank you for that. And some of you are giving here through your tithes and offerings. God bless you, and thank you so much for the way in which you are obedient to the Lord in helping us carry out the work of the church here locally and also around the world. God bless you. 
Good morning, church. As you all know, we've been announcing uh, in the month of October as Pastor Appreciation Sunday. And we do want to say we are so thankful to the Lord for Pastor Joe Gregory and for his family. Each one of you that, that, that give of your talents to help our church. And whenever we moved out here from Illinois, we wondered uh, what church would we be able to find that truly preaches God's word and is alive and has, and has some zealousness. And we're so thankful that this church does. And for Pastor Joe, your zealousness and the importance of prayer. You truly have reminded us how that on Wednesday nights, prayer does make a difference. Here's a little poem that we would like to read for him today. Preach the word. It says, a pastor has a duty of delivering what God has said. To preach God's word with power so that hungry souls are fed. Pastor Joe, we must proclaim, you stand upon God's word to preach the truth unashamedly till all the world has heard. Each sermon tells of saving grace to change a life from sin into a life that's clean and pure. God knows where to begin. We certainly are thankful God called you years ago to preach his word, proclaim his truth, so others would truly know. The saving power of Jesus Christ is changing lives today. So preach the word, his message clear, there is no other way. Thank you, Pastor Joe. Thank you.
Thank you, Charles and Deb. I think you may have modified a few uh, lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we just want to thank Pastor Joe for all he does for us and, and the tireless hours that we know go into that type of a role and just for being such a leader in our church is a blessing. Please uh, stand and, and join us singing with us for one more song this morning. <laughs>
Pastor Joe has been talking about battles, and we need to be prepared for battle, for the Lord does not guarantee us life free from battle, but he guarantees that he will be with us throughout it all. so much on behalf of my family. Uh, just a, an update, we are in the midst of our series called uh, The Quest, which Lord willing, we hope to wrap up two weeks from today. Uh, next Sunday is our Faith Promise Sunday. We'll hear a little bit more about that. So next Sunday we will uh, 
have a guest speaker. But today, we're going to continue looking in the book of Ephesians and looking at the special equipment that God has provided for us to engage in this thing called spiritual battle, spiritual warfare that we find ourselves uh, living in. So today I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this time as we've centered now our thoughts on the scriptures. Teach us, we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is actually looking at part two of the equipment that God uh, has provided for us last week. We looked at part one, where we looked at the first three of the six. Today we're looking at the last three. Three. The very first one that comes to the table uh, today is the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Now the shield that the Roman soldiers would use in Paul's day was made of thick wood. They were around two, uh, around uh, four feet long and about two feet wide. They were covered with real heavy, rough uh, leather and they had teeth uh, on the sides of them that could interlock with other shields as well. In other words, uh, that was there to protect the Roman soldier from any spears, arrows, or any fiery darts. The little teeth on the end were so that that soldier could join with other soldiers. They would lock those shields together and they would make what would be known as a wall. So there could be 20 or 30 men in one great big row and lock their shields all together and then they would advance into the enemy's camp or territory even amidst any kind of arrows or any kind of things that would come to snatch their life away, they would be protected because of their shield. It reminds us, especially in this day of a pandemic, that you and I need one another. We need other Christians. I need you, and I think that you might need me. We need each other in the midst of of all the things that are going on in normal circumstances, but especially now when we've got all this tightrope that which we're walking, you know, we gotta keep social distancing, we gotta do this, we gotta do that, we, we can't be around this, and all the while we need one another. Can we say amen to that? Amen. amen. We need to be able to interlock our shield of faith together that we can stand against the day of evil. Now this faith is not a saving faith like it has whenever you come to Christ where Christ saves you and you have that faith of just believing that God will do what he says he will do as far as cleansing you, forgiving you. What is talking about here is what is known as a living faith. Meaning that we live our daily lives based upon God's promises to us. That in spite of what we feel, in spite of our circumstances, in spite of what we see or what we don't see, that our faith is in God's word to us. 
For example, uh, I know that all of us, from one time or another, have felt that we've been alone, whether it's been because of our circumstances, whether it's because we're sick or we're tired or we're emotionally depleted, or whether it's just a bad season in our life, sometimes we can feel and go through seasons where we feel alone. We wonder where God is. We wonder if he's left us. Our prayer life seems to be stagnant. Our prayers don't seem to go any higher than, 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 the, than the roof of which we're praying. How many of you have ever been there before? And you have had a sense of aloneness. Even though you might be surrounded by people, there's a sense of just being utterly alone. You may feel that way, but here's the truth of living faith. The scripture says, this is what Courtney said and sang about, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So whenever you and I might have those feelings, those thoughts, we can we push those things aside and we lay a hold with the shield of faith of standing on the promises. God, you have said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said, I will be with you even to the end of the age. So God, you are with me in spite of what I see, because I don't live by sight. I live by faith. And so I'm going to press on. See, that's taking the word of God. The other thing that might happen is that you might go sometimes through seasons where uh, you think, well, will God actually meet these needs that I have. Maybe it's an emotional need that you're going through. Maybe, maybe you've gone through some, some loss, the loss of a friend, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a relationship. Maybe it's a financial crisis that, that, that you're kind of struggling through and, and you wonder, will, will God actually come through with that? You know, sometimes I really have my moments right now. You know, our daughter's probably going to need braces. Our son's probably going to need glasses. And we're still, by the grace of God, waiting on a brand new roof that we have been dealing with for almost two years, my friend. Two years. And every Tom, Dick, and Harry, that's no joke, that lives on our street has got a new roof but us. <laughs> and sometimes I go to turn over in the middle of the night, and that roof will creep in, particularly if it's raining outside. Or the wind's blowing. No. I can't go by what I feel. I can't go by what I think. I can't go how long it's taking. I, I'm just going to. God will supply all of our needs according to his. See, that's living by faith, my friend. That's why, that's why it's so exciting for me. Sometimes it lifts up my heart to come with you guys on Wednesday night prayer meeting. I don't know where this nonsense came across that Wednesday night prayer meeting is boring and we shouldn't have to come to it. That's just an enemy's, enemy's lie. Man, I tell you what, it does me good to hear the saints of God on Wednesday nights stand up and talk about how God has come through for them. See, that's locking our shields of faith together and encouraging one another. Can't we say amen? amen? So you have a living faith. You trust in God's word. That is your shield of faith against all the enemy's little tactics. And you know what those tactics You know those little arrows. Sometimes those arrows are just a little hateful attitude. How many of you have ever been there? You just want to have a good old fight. Maybe that's just me. <clears throat> I used to want to have a good little fight every time I go to Walmart and have to get in the line. I've talked to you about that. I'll tell you one thing that was so good for me at Walmart is when they came up with those self-checkout lines. <coughs> the fact that those little things can come to you. Fiery darts of doubt. Fiery darts of lust. Maybe it's lust for food. Maybe it's lust for position, for revenge. It can take all kinds of little things. Maybe it's, and how many of you, I have, I've had some of these things come into me in clusters. Like in a, in, a, in a given moment. But these are the things that, that extinguish, that guard, guard us is the shield of faith. Amen. The shield of faith. To keep us away. And this is what happens. 
You let, you, you, you let a, a wrongful attitude, a fiery dart, come and get into you. It'll start turning you from God. It will. It'll keep you away from Him. That, that's the whole purpose of which those things are sent by the enemy. And yet we extinguish those by what? By the shield of faith. Next is the helmet of salvation. The helmet, of course, is to protect the head. Now, I know that we have learned that the spiritual battle goes on in the heavenlies with the authorities, the, uh, the demonic influences going on. But listen, that, that, that strategy, that, that, that warfare that takes place is then implemented where? In your mind. The enemy comes to you in your mind, my friend. That's exactly what he did with Eve. He came to her and began to reason with her way of thinking. What's he got really saying that? Maybe, maybe I heard it wrong. Maybe I remembered it wrong. And, and the battlefield is in the mind. That's why it is so important for us to guard what we watch, to guard what we read. Um, I, I shared earlier in the service, the first service this morning, I've been a little guarded with what my children watch. A lot more so than when I was young. Now, I grew up in the 1960s, so things, believe it or not, were a lot milder then than they are today. But when I was uh, growing up, I watched this television show called Dark Shadows. How many of you remember Dark Shadows? <clears throat> Barnabas Collins. Oh, it used to, it used to scare the daylights out of me. I'd have to sleep with the lights on. There's no way I could have gone to sleep and gone to bed with the lights on. But see, to guard our thinking, to guard what we think about is crucial. And this helmet of salvation is the mark of a new mind that's given to us when we come to faith in Christ by being born again. That we now have the mind of Christ. Now, a lot of Christians think, well, now that we are living by faith, that means that we're supposed to check our minds out. Listen, my friend, God gave you a mind at once. Did he tell you to put it on the shelf and not use it? Amen. You're supposed to use your intellect. Your mind is a gift from God that is to be used even in spiritual battle. The scripture says to grow in the grace and the knowledge. Well, where's the knowledge go? In your mind, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, one of the greatest weapons is to have the shield of faith and also then what? The helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation that we would have the mind of Christ. This is why it is crucial for us to study and to know the Word of God so that it is the thought processes at which we screen our life and our view of life. That we live with the shield of faith, that we live with the helmet of salvation, and then we live with the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, the Roman soldier would have a short uh, uh, sword that would be not long, but short. This way, they would have to get real close contact with fighting the enemy. You, you don't you don't go like this. No, you, you get right at right. You, you just confront this thing. Well, this is exactly what we're to do when we're battling the spiritual forces of darkness is that we use the sword of the spirit, which is God's written word. Listen to what uh, we find here about God's word in Hebrews chapter 4, beginning with just verse uh, 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts, the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. 
The word of God pierces to the heart of the motive of all of us. Just like a sword can pierce material, so does the word of God. The scriptures can really narrow into to the heart of the whole matter in our lives. This is why we use the word of God as a weapon against the forces of the enemy. Now remember the night on which Jesus was betrayed. Remember that night? Peter took a sword. And what did he do? Cut off someone's ear. When, when Moses got wind that God was going to possibly use him to deliver his own people, the Hebrews, from slavery in Egypt, what did he do? He took a sword and he killed somebody. He killed an Egyptian, which caused him to have to run for his life. Both of these men found out that it was the word of God which is really the spiritual sword. It was the word of God that brought about change. Peter discovered it on the day of Pentecost, and Moses discovered it on the day in which the children of Israel walked free from Egypt's bondage. The word of God is our spiritual sword. What happens to a sword? What happens to a physical sword the more you use it? It gets duller. But the more you use the word of God, it gets sharper. Also, in order for a, sh uh, in order for a sword to work, if I had a physical sword up here, in order for it to work, I would have to pick it up with my hand. I would have to be the one to use it. It has no power in and of itself. But the word of God is alive and active. This sword, this physical sword that I would use physically in combat, it, it's to do what? It's to, to cut, to bring harm. But the Word of God brings, it may wound, but it wounds to do what? To bring healing and to bring life. The Word of God. This is why it is crucial for us to give ourselves time to the daily, not occasionally, to the daily reading and memorization of the Word of God. Look here, what, uh, and you guys know all of this, uh, like the back of your hand, because Jesus, you know the story of Jesus, he crippled the enemy, he combated the enemy with what? Reasoning? No, with the Scriptures. Now you know the story with Jesus and, and him being tempted, but let me go ahead, if I may, and read it to you. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, wow, you talk about being vulnerable, open. He was hungry. The tempter came and said to him, notice how he approaches Jesus. He attacks with doubt about who he is. If, if you are the Son of God, then tell these stones to become bread. In other words, go ahead. Meet your need outside of the will of God. You can do it. If, if, you, if, if you're really who you say you are, go ahead and do it. But Jesus said, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's from the book of Deuteronomy. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Again, he's questioning who he is. If, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, then throw yourself down from here. Now notice what the devil does. He brings in the scripture. He says, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Now, I probably, you probably don't realize this, but that quotation that the devil brings to Jesus isn't even all of the quotation. He leaves part of it out. It's from the book of Psalms. He just does part of it. 
You know how the devil does when he comes to you. Come on, I've been there a thousand times. He'll tempt you and he'll bring scripture in the, in the package. He will. Oh, you can do that. Oh, you, you, you can do that. Remember, remember that once you do it, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So, so, go ahead. These things are real, my friend. And we're, we're, we are just really vulnerable if we don't take these things seriously. And Jesus said to him, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. In other words, we're not to test the Lord or to tempt the Lord. Now, we talked about this in the first service. What avenue did God tell us that we could test him on? Tithing. Tithing. God, that's the only thing we're to test the God on is our money. God says, listen, you test me. I dare you to. You start giving a tithe to the local church from your income. You start giving 10%. You, 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 you just start giving. You test me and see if I will pour out a blessing on you. I don't know how God does it, but we've talked about this a thousand times. He does more with 90% than I could do with 100%. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Now notice he doesn't attack him this time. He comes to him on friendly terms and says, listen, I'll give you something. Let's just have a little bit of an exchange here. You, I'll give you something if you give me something. All this I'll give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Now, I took the first service. Now, when you think about that, isn't that just the epitome of, uh, of just the nerve that here Satan would come to the eternal Son of God, and say, listen, I'll give you something as if God needed anything. I'll give you something if you will bow down and worship me. I mean, that takes a lot of nerve. And Jesus says, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came. And attended him. This is why it is so important for you, 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 even you at home, to give yourself to the memorization of Scripture. I don't know how God does it, but He is faithful to His Word. Whenever I've had those points of being tempted, the Scripture will come to my mind. And sometimes God even does this the Spirit will bring a hymn to my mind. A hymn that has a concept in it that is built on the scripture that speaks exactly to where I'm being tempted. The, the, there will be a hymn, or the tune of the song will come. The enemy cannot stand and stand up against the scriptures, the word of God. It is our sword to fight whatever he may send to us. Amen. Jesus when you really think about it, these six pieces of equipment that the Apostle Paul has laid out for us, have you ever realized that Jesus Christ is those things to us? You ever thought about that? The first one that we looked about last week was the belt of truth. What did Jesus say? I am the way and the truth. The breastplate of righteousness. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Listen, we're all going to stand before God's throne. We're all going to give him a review. I just read that, that we're going to give an account to God. But listen, I'm not going to have to stand there, thank God, by my own merits or my own righteousness. But I'm going to be standing there with the righteousness of Christ that has been given to me by faith. Can we say amen? Amen. You, if you've trusted in Christ, it's going to be the righteousness of Christ that God is going to be looking at. Can we say amen to that? Amen. So, he's the truth. He's the righteousness. The gospel of peace. 
Jesus is our peace. The fact that we talk today about the shield of faith, because he is the faithful high priest, because he is faithful, we can place our faith in the promises of what he will do for us. The salvation, Jesus Christ is our salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, this is the written Word of God, but Christ is the living Word of God. It's amazing what He is to us. Let me read to you Romans chapter 13. Paul wrote this to the Romans. Romans chapter 13, beginning with verse 11. Listen to the Word of God here. And do this understanding this present time. The hour has come for you. He's talking to us as Christians. Not talking to Washington. Not talking to Hollywood. He's talking to the church. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness. Let us put aside, uh, uh, put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live decently as in the daytime, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality, not in debauchery, not in dissension and jealousies. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. The victory, my friend, has been purchased and is ours already because of Christ. Amen. We just need to lay hold of it. You remember the story, and this is probably one of the hardest things for us as Christians uh, to, to keep in mind. It doesn't matter if you're new to the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're in high school, junior high, or if you're all the way at the other end, a senior and retired. From beginning to end, and everything else in between, you and I are never going to arrive in this life where we are not going to be combated by the enemy. It's just not going to happen. We have got to keep that in mind. This is what happened in the life of David. Remember, David, instead of engaging in the battle with his men, he stayed at home and took it easy. What happened? One night he comes out and he finds Bathsheba. He would have been safer had he been on the battlefield? Had he been on the battlefield? This is why it is important for you and I to stay engaged, to stay connected with one another, to stay connected with Christ, and to make sure that we're not just taking one of these pieces of the armor, but that we're wearing all six of them spiritually. I close this sermon today, this message today, with just some general questions to each of us. How are you using the shield of faith in your life? How are you standing and living out on the living faith, the promises of God's Word? Next, have you taken the, the helmet of salvation? Have you received and trusted in Christ for the Lord of your life? And are you spending time in God's Word seeking to apply it to every aspect of your daily life. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Father, for this time around the Word of God. Help us to take in spiritual hand the shield of faith, standing on your promises by faith. Help us to, to uh, exercise the helmet of our salvation, to protect our minds. We pray that we would also use the Word of God as we engage in the spiritual battle that we find ourselves in. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you all for joining us this morning, and especially thank you for joining us here on our Facebook page. Uh, we appreciate you being a part of us, and thank you for joining us. We trust that you will join us again next Sunday for our 1030 service, and God bless you.